Well, it has been a while. Um, it seems that every single time I get my life together, I get my ish together, I get my channel together, something wants to happen to just throw me off and make me start over. I just... Well... Hello, assalamu alaikum, welcome back friends. If it is your first time here, welcome. My name is Hafiza. I am a lifestyle slash current events vlogger, blogger, YouTuber. Um, and yeah, we're, we're in quarantine. <laughs> Honestly, it feels weird to be in front of the camera because I haven't been in front of the camera since end of March-ish. And I tried filming in April, that didn't work out because my professors decided to make everything due around the same time. And I have things that are late and all that just, but that's not what this video is here for. Um, I'm going to be making a video that's going to be going out next week, talking about how coronavirus has affected me and hopefully you guys will be able to relate to that. But just let you know, your girl was struggling. Girl is still struggling just a little bit, but you know, we're almost done with the semester, so it's okay. This is mainly like a commentary video. I want to kind of like spark a conversation and also just report on what I've seen. Um, so feel free to leave your thoughts in the comments or feel free to DM me, message me on Instagram and whatnot, you know, about how you feel about everything that I talk about in this video. I don't even know where to start. Like, so recently there has been two types of trends happening, um, mainly on Twitter, but on social media in general. There has been the resurfacing of people's old tweets, um, specifically old racist tweets. And then there has been the surfacing of racism on social media, specifically on TikTok or on Snapchat. Um, and like throughout this video, I'm gonna be inserting pictures, but just so you can see like an example, like right here <laughs> of um, what I'm talking about. Um, so basically a lot of influencers and just random people on Twitter have been ousted for their old racist tweets. Um, both black and non-black people have been a have been perpetrators of this. Um, and it has been kind of jarring and weird and annoying and angering to see all of this on my timeline recently because it's just the idea of like, you know, why? Um, well, why? And I asked why for two reasons. I asked why are people digging these things up? Like y'all got time time now, but two, why was this a thing? I posed the question the other day on my Instagram um, and it was just the idea of like, you know, I am really tired of this thing of racism being so common and racism being so natural for people to do. Like it was a thing back in the day that everybody was just racist, especially towards black women, especially towards darker skinned black women. And as a darker black woman, I, I just don't understand why people think that this is a phase. Why is racism a phase? And it's funny because, you know, people ask us, the black community, you know, the people who are affected by this, you know, oh, it was in the past, you know, they've changed, they've grown, why can't you just get over it? It's not a big deal, it's just banter, it's just jokes. But it's not. Like, why do black people have to be the butt of your jokes? Are y'all that tasteless that you have to bring other people down in order to make a couple, like, jokes? Because if that's the case, then you shouldn't be a comedian. You know, you should have been trying to be funny. Because if you can't be funny without bringing other people down, then you're just an asshole. I'm sorry. For this to be something so prevalent is really jarring because it's like everyone has done it. You know, not me, because I came 
came into Twitter a bit late compared to other people. I came in like 2014-ish. And the only reason why I came onto Twitter was because my high school had a Twitter and I wanted to follow them on Twitter and I wanted to follow my friends or whatever. But the fact that everybody has this type of past is really confusing because it's just like, what did we do to you? Like, what did we do to warrant this? And I guess it just comes from like, you know, overall systemic racism and the ideas put out there that, you know, it's okay to rag on black people when it's not. And if you do rag on black people, you're not gonna face any repercussions. You're not gonna lose your job. You're not gonna lose your sanity. You know, you're not going to lose anything much because you have more privilege than us, depending on who you are and what you're doing. And I think that's the reason why people felt it was so easy to do this, was that they felt as if, well, one, everybody was doing it, so it wasn't an issue, but two, they knew that they weren't going to face any backlash at the time. You know, well, now that backlash is coming and it's kicking y'all in the butt. So how do you feel about that? Because I feel pretty good about it, I'm not gonna lie. Now there has been this, you know, um, resurgence of the idea of cancel culture and what it is, what it implicates and how effective it is. And I don't think that people who look from it, from the outside in, recognize what people who claim that they're going to cancel X, Y, and Z, what they're trying to do. Me personally, I think that people can grow, no doubt about it. But also, we're gonna have to talk about why you felt it was okay back in the day to say X, Y, and Z, and if you possibly still think it's okay, but now that you know that you're gonna get called out for it, that you're trying to be quiet, so that way you don't say those things, but you might have those things in your head. You know, we don't know what's going on in people's heads. You know, people can say one thing on the outside, but be thinking something completely different on the inside. You know, me, I have no filter. So whatever goes in my head immediately comes out of my mouth. I don't think it's really bad, but I'm working on it. So me personally, I think that cancel culture works in a different sense than what people think it does. I recently read this tweet. I can't find it, unfortunately, because it's long gone. But the tweet said that um, cancel culture is not about, you know, per se, like, canceling the person completely and not allowing them to have anything left over. For the people who are canceling them, you know, it is about expressing that they're severing ties with the person um, or the figure and why they're severing ties with that person in hopes for people to recognize that this person is not who they think it is. And that way there's some sort of accountability that comes from it. I think that, you know, the actions of our past shouldn't completely, and I say completely, hold us back. And the reason why I say completely and not like you know, shouldn't completely, but rather than just completely in general is because there's some actions in the past that to be honest, I don't think I could ever forgive. Like, I don't think I could ever forgive for certain people. Like, you know, like sexual assault, you know, those types of things, like I don't think I could ever forgive anybody for those types of things if they've done those things in the past. But then it's like, you know, why do we have, why should we excuse racism? And I think there's two sides of the coin to it. I think there are people who saw it as a trend and just kind of hopped on the bandwagon and was like, okay, we're all being assholes towards black people. I'm gonna do it too. You know, and because they saw nobody getting any repercussions from it, they joined in on it too. And then there's people who are just blatantly racist. You know, there are people who are just flat out, they don't like black people or any other people of color, or if they're a person of color, they don't like, you know what I mean? And they, they just don't, they don't mess with it. And those people, they are, you know, way past retribution. Um, so feel free to cancel them and whatnot. But people who have seen maybe the errors of their way, possibly, have acknowledged it, whether it was amongst their friends or publicly, and have not done any offenses since then, you know, I think that's okay. You know, I think it's okay to forgive them. At the end of the day, though, if you are not the party 
that is affected by what these people are saying, you do not have the right to tell the people who are affected by it to, to accept their apology and to forgive them and to move on. No! If it doesn't affect you, scoot, scoot over there. Feel free to do whatever you want with them. I don't care. But if it's affecting me, if it's affecting me, I'm gonna decide whether or not I wanna get over it and whether I wanna continue my support for them. But now we come to today. So recently on TikTok, I have seen on TikTok and I've seen mainly on Twitter, a bunch of people, mainly white people, who have been posting racist TikToks. So there is this trend now where it's like, you know, you maybe say like a stereotype and then it lures the people who fall into that stereotype in and then you say okay now since y'all are here how's this look or how's my form or whatever and there are some lighthearted jokes you know that are out there but then there's always that one person that has to take it too far you know like are you you're ever in, like you know you're ever like play joking with your friends about some shit and then like you say something that really hurts them and then you're just like bro chill like it wasn't that deep that's white people on TikTok right now. They have made jokes about slavery. They've made jokes about police brutality. They have made jokes about mass incarceration. And I'm just like, why? Why? If you are not funny enough to make jokes without dragging black people, do not try. Don't try. Y'all know what the hell you're doing. Don't act as if you don't know what you're doing. You know, it... TikToks might be one minute, but it takes probably close to maybe up to an hour or so to even edit those things just for a minute. So you opened your phone, opened the app, recorded yourself saying these things, sat down with yourself, opened your phone, edited the video, made it all nice with the, all the little effects and everything like that, and willingly posted it. And you did that to yourself. All for you to say, I didn't know what I was doing at the time. I'm so sorry. I didn't mean any harm. It was just a joke. My boyfriend told me to do it. Blah, blah, blah. No! Since you know what you were doing, you, like, you're not stupid. These people are like old enough to know what's right from wrong. So I have no sympathy for these people. I especially have no sympathy for them when black Twitter finds out every single little detail about them and sends it out because you did it to yourself. If you sat down with the energy to put this thing out, you know what you were doing. You were not in no whatever mindset. You knew what you were doing and you knew the implications of what you were doing and you knew that there was going to be outrage. You know, there's a whole thing about like outrage publicity and politics and whatnot, but I'm not gonna get into that here. That's for a whole other video, but you know what you're doing. So then when people come onto your social media and start ragging on you, people contact your schools, whether it's your high school or the colleges you're accepted to, people start contacting your parents I think you should leave the parents out of this, to be honest. That's just me, but like, you know, I can't control people, so I'm not advocating for that. I'm not advocating that. But people do X, Y, and Z, and you know you've seen people do this to other people. I have no sympathy for you. I really don't, because at this point, it's just come to, like, I'm so heated. <laughs> I can't. Oh my God. Do you know how hard it is as a black person to go on social media, to want to enjoy social media and just see things that completely hurt you or completely get you mad? You know how hard it is to be in a perpetual state of anger? It's freaking exhausting. And for people to do these things and then start crying because they get everything stripped away from them, rightfully so, for something that they willingly did, I, I don't care, sweetie, you can cry all you want. Those are crocodile tears. 
Here, you're crying because you got caught. You know, and what's even worse is that some of these things you don't even have to catch people in, you know, because they did it to themselves. You posted it for everyone in the world to see on the app or apps, you know, and for people who do get caught, how does it feel to be a closeted racist? How does it feel to be invoking the N word and other things, you know, amongst your friends, but then not realizing that some of your friends might out you? How does that feel? Let me know because I have never felt that feeling in my entire life. Cause it happened recently at Temple too. These two girls, they were talking amongst themselves and one of them said the N word and people were swift with the action and they got her and they got them. They knew who they were. They contacted the teams that they played for. If one of them was like a sports person, I don't know what. So the fact that that happened right here at my school, it hits home for me. I'm a student here. I go to class with these people. I don't know what they could do to me. That is dangerous. Here's my call to action. If you are a racist, keep it to yourself. All right, keep it, keep it in your heart. Nobody wanna hear that. Nobody wants to see that. Nobody cares. If you want, DM your president. Let him know how racist you are. He will gladly pat you on the back for it. I don't care. If you are racist and you want people to know that you are racist and you put it out there, don't start crying. Once, start, once things start happening to you, because that's not the norm around here. A lot of people don't play. Black people don't play. And if you do that, they're gonna find you. Black Twitter is very powerful. Like they run the culture like of Twitter basically. So don't even, if you wanna save yourself the heartache and the stress of losing your job and everything like that, which in two or three months, you'll probably be re-employed somewhere else anyways, don't do it. And to all my black people, cause this is mainly for black people, because I've seen it happen to us the most. It's okay to take a day off, like the socials. I need to do this for myself too, but it's okay to take a day off because it, it gets a bit hard, unfortunately, to be seeing these things all the time. You know, especially when the institutions that are supposed to be protecting against these types of hate speech aren't. There are so many TikTok, Black TikTokers who have had their accounts suspended, banned, just because they've spoken out against racism or they've done something and TikTok is like, that's not in our community guidelines. But you're allowing videos of white people and other people of color to be saying things about black people and you're just allowing it to speed on by like it's nothing. That's rude. Same thing with Twitter. You know how many times I've reported tweets for being incorrect on Twitter. Jack Dorsey don't care. You know, the Twitter admins, they don't care, but white people are able to run them up on the app and say so many terrible things on the app. But if a black person calls them out, all of a sudden they're suspended for not following community guidelines. It's madness. So we can take breaks if we need to. We don't have to subject ourselves to watching every single thing that goes against us because that's hurtful and that's tolling. But yeah, I hope that my generation, you know, Gen Z and the ones that are after us, I hope that we can hopefully Change some things, I don't know. I think we are more so the generation of accountability. I think we are very, very um, eager to call people out when necessary, which is a good thing because there's always gonna be these types of people, unfortunately. There's always gonna be racist people, unfortunately, but we are more willing to let them know that what they're doing is wrong and that what they're doing won't slide. We're no longer allowing to uh, these things to happen. We're no longer giving space to these things. And I think that's really awesome. So yeah, that's all I have for today. Um, please like, comment, subscribe. I am tired, so I will be taking a nap soon. <laughs> uh, love you all. Thank you so much. 
please subscribe. You know, I'm so close to 200 subscribers and it would mean the world to me to hit 200 at least by the end of the month. You know, it's May, it's my birthday month. And for my birthday, all I want is 200 subscribers. So please like, comment, subscribe. Let me know if you enjoyed this video. Follow me on social media, all of that jazz. And I will see you next week, I promise. Bye-bye. <laughs> I'm allergic to the bullshit.